everyone, this is Levity 60 with another video, and I am on the streets of Hong Kong for a very specific reason. And that is to answer the question, why is China so populated? But first, to actually ask another question is, is China super populated? And that's a difficult answer. I mean, I can say yes and no, but it's very important that we address the elephant in the room. And there's a huge difference between being a populated country and also a population-dense country. Now, China is often referenced uh, in references throughout our language. I mean, people will say things like, if you dig a hole all the way through the earth, you'll end up in China. Or, you know, don't throw away that food. There's starving kids in China. Well, it's not really anymore, right? Eh? She's got more chins than a Chinese phone book. This ridiculous vehicle. I've never seen anything like that in Hong Kong. <laughs> it's bizarre. Surprisingly enough, you know, in my eight years of being here, I'm shocked when I go home to realize how little people actually know about this massive, massive country. So one thing that people always talk about China is that China is super, super populated and there's tons of people here. For about a thousand years, China had about 60 million people. So more or less the population of California. And by 1953, the population went to half a billion. Now this can be answered by the fact that China was an agricultural country and more hands on the farm meant more workers and more harvest. However, by 1982, the population jumped by almost 50% and that's when it hit about a billion people. This record jump was almost unheard of in the history of mankind. Now some attribute this to the one child policy, an effort to control birth and population by Mao Zedong, who was the founder of the Communist Party of China. However, it was Mao that also pushed for incentives for people to have more children after he took power in 1949. Now this was an effort to show up the Soviet Union back then, they were kind of rivals. And it was in terms of uh, steel and production quotas. So the more steel they could produce, whether it was pig iron or not, and the more food production quotas they could turn, the better they looked. So more people equaled more power in his eyes. However, lots of people in the party disagreed with Mao and they actually saw a population as a big problem for development. China, keep in mind, was still incredibly poor back then. And there were measures for population control that were put into place with things like barefoot doctors who would go out into the countryside to administer abortions and contraceptives in order to keep the population down. Despite the efforts of the government to kind of slow down this whole population boom, we're now looking at a population of 1.4 billion people. It wasn't that long ago that there was half of that or less than half of that. Everyone knows about the one-child policy uh, in China that Mao Zedong basically came up with to control the population. A lot of people don't know that's actually been changed to the two-child policy because of societal pressures on people to have to raise a lot of people in their family from now on. So I am in fact in Hong Kong to address the gigantic difference between population density and a giant population. Hong Kong is a special administrative region in China and it's also the fourth most dense place in the world, but it only has about 7 million people. However, let me tell you, it is dense. In fact, for every square kilometer, there are more than 6,000 people. It can be a mission to get anywhere on foot through the crowds. And if you're claustrophobic, you will not have a good time here. The size of apartments here in Hong Kong average about 50 square feet of living space, and that is basically half a parking spot. People basically live in areas smaller than prison cells, and don't even get me started on Macau, another Chinese territory. However, if you look at China on the same list, you'll notice that it's not a densely populated country. In fact, it's number 80 on the list. Despite having 1.4 billion people, there are only 144 people per square kilometer somewhere around the Czech Republic, Poland, or Denmark. And I would hazard a guess that most people wouldn't consider those to be crowded countries. But I would guess that most people would include China on that list. So is China crowded? Well, yes and no. If you're in Shanghai or Beijing, you're looking at between one and 3,000 people per square kilometer. But if you go to Guangdong province in the south where I live, you'll see that there are about 550 people per square kilometer. And that's kind of comparable to New Jersey. But if you go to Inner Mongolia province where I lived for two years, you have about 20 people per square kilometer. And Tibet province actually just has two. That would place Inner Mongolia province in the same population density as Colorado and Tibet with Wyoming, hardly crowded places. Now you can get a really good idea for this in our uh, new TV show conquering northern China, where we actually rode our motorcycles across five provinces, across northern China, and it was over 10,000 kilometers. And in this show, I think you can get quite the idea of why China is a populated country, but maybe not a crowded country. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh my God! I know, isn't that just disgusting? It's like a sphincter. Ready to go? Let's go.
。你们愿意在中国用摩托车来参观我们整个中国的风景？我感觉你们是最棒的。Buryat, Buryat, Buryat. This is Buryat in his awesome hat. It's kind of weird. I've never really had my my ass massaged by a man before. <laughs> Oh man, my bike almost went over the mountain, dude. <gasps> Literally right there, right in front of us is North Korea. You know, this is just built so tough they couldn't destroy it. This will absolutely be the freshest goat I've ever had. Dude, This is one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. <laughs> Last year they lost 20 of their reindeer to the bears. The diversity in the landscape has been staggering. <laughs> oh my god, are we sleeping in a ship? Either of us use the bathroom, the other person can watch. If you haven't seen the first season, go check out Conquering Southern China on Vimeo On Demand. Uh, that's vimeo.com slash on demand slash Conquering Southern China. And you can still use the promo code and check out chicks throwing up everywhere. You can check out the uh, promo code Lao Winning which you can use to get 10% off of the show. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please go to my patron, patreon.com slash Lowerty6, and uh, you can vote on the next topic that I actually talk about. I want to say thank you so much, Low Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one. Whoa, who's this? Hey. Jasper, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Cool. Well, uh, Jasper is actually a subscriber, and you go to school here? Yeah, University of Hong Kong. That's awesome. Where is the University of Hong Kong? Uh, just over there, but up the mountain. Okay, like, I catch yeah. you. Cool. We've got to go and like take the escalator up. Very, uh, very beautiful area though, that we're in right now. Cool. What are you doing in this in this part of town? Uh, just shopping for Halloween. Halloween. Oh, I yeah. forgot Halloween's coming up. Yeah, it's Shit, this weekend. Dude. It is it. Not got your costume. No. Well, I mean, in China, nobody celebrates. Thank you so much, Lowenders. I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>